Well, a couple things um, just before we get started. Just continue to educate kind of what's going on, what, what OTAs are and what minicamp really are. And everybody does it a little different way. We're going to continue to work here. Um, just, you know, I think there is a lot of, I think, misconception around the league what minicamp is. We're not in training camp yet, but our guys are here. It is a mandatory camp. Everybody was here yesterday, got their physical. What you're going to see, there's some guys will continue to hold out for different reasons. You still have the, guy, the guys that had things cleaned up. They won't be out there. The Keith Smith, Ben Staler, Deion Jones. Guys that you'll, that'll be out there that are limited in different, fa in different parts of practice, in different parts of return to play is what we put them in. Cam Batson, Frank Darby, John Fitzpatrick, Alden Tate, Austin Trammell, Eric Harris, TQ Graham, Isaiah Oliver, Tease Tabor. And then the last two guys that you won't see out there for a different reason, Cordero Patterson, he and I have been working on a vet uh, off-season program to build him up to be ready for July 26. He's here. He wanted to work. I have, we, myself and our um, performance staff, we have a different plan for, for uh, Cordero. But um, so you won't be, I'm not going to crank him up for two days. We need him ready to go on July 26. And last thing, unfortunately, Mike Ford had a, a family personal matter. So I did excuse Mike Ford this morning. And with that, I know there's a lot of information, but I just want to get it out of the way because I know that's a, that's the hot topic. Who's out there, who's not. Great. So any other questions you have, feel free to ask. Yeah, Coach, the rationale uh, behind Cordell just, uh, you know, want to monitor his situation and uh, just have him. Well, just the same thing. Guy that he has an off-season program that works well for him in Charlotte. He's a, he's a real pro. Communicate all the time. I didn't think it was necessary where he's at and where we need him to, to play a 17-game season. Again, it's not one-size-fits-all D-led. So try to be smart. That was my decision. And so he's here, but he won't be out in the field. And uh, just was going over stuff yesterday, and uh, time and the spacing kind of jumped out with me with sure. the, the passing the game and so forth. Uh, and then you'll be able to just slide him into that. But how's the time and the spacing going so far? Well, you know, that's the thing. We've tried to be creative and make sure in our seven on seven, I mean, that's what you can get out of it. I spoke on that a little bit last week. We understand that's not real without a, without a pass rush. Those are what the rules are, and we try to maximize that. So you can get that trust. There's timing, different progressions, depending on the concept we're asking them. And then, you know, spacing. You know, obviously, you want guys at the right depths. You don't stack them. So that's how guys get open, especially in, in zone or, or route craft versus man. And then ultimately, it comes down to the quarterback trusting the receiver he's throwing to. And those are things that you can build this time of year, and they need to carry over when we get back into camp. What did you maybe learn from last season that, you, that, you, that <laughs> with him that you brought to maybe create a different type of plan for him to get? Well, just my experience with different vets I've coached in the past, and knowing CP, he's got good good habits, good work habits, um, and that's the thing we understand. I'm trying to maximize everybody's on different different uh, parts of their career, and so with some of the bigger guys, you know, we, we have alternative plans for them that you may or may not see, depending what you see on the field. So with CP, where he's at, and really the usage rate that he had last year, we're trying to be smart to maximize him so we can get the most out for 17 games and beyond. Was that usage rate last year maybe a little bit unexpected is in turn, and that's part of this too? Well, every season going there. I mean, you're going to deal with injuries. Unfortunately, those are things. It's the one thing that's 100% in the NFL. We try to be smart, but it's, you know, uh, something's going to come up every week. So you're not going to can't anticipate having your, your same 48 guys up. It's great if you do. That's really not reality. So there's a natural evolution that takes place every season. Justin, uh, super hot outside. Uh, did you guys <laughs> oh, hydrate? I know a little bit. Been uh, the players about hydrating. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be looking to see who doesn't go out there. Uh, you know, maybe he stays in here for a long time and comes out there late at practice. That's not and um, you can't hide if you're wearing neon. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, did you, I'm just curious, did you get, I know there are fans and stuff. Did you give any thoughts to either going inside or going earlier in the day? We, we stay with our same structure because yeah, there's a rhyme and reason to it. We appreciate uh, the season ticket members mm -hmm. that are out here today. Um, and more, again, I, I can't control the weather, and I understand you could change the schedule, but we have a schedule where we try to maximize a lot of our strength and conditioning and the way we stagger it, and so I didn't move it up, no. Is there any benefit of, you know, as you try to instill this toughness and this attitude of you know, having them out there in this two days of really It's not the bravado of, like, the old school, like, you know, Bear Bryant, Junction boys and giving them some salt tabs and not giving them water. That's not what we're trying to accomplish. But you do have to 
play in this heat at certain times, right? So uh, it's just part of it. I mean, it's it, most guys would prefer to be on the grass, especially this time of year, and want to be outside. Some of us appreciate the junction boards reference. Yeah. More so than <laughs> um, yeah. What about the that. layering of like the chemistry of this football team and how much you did last year to this year? You feel like there's enough of a foundation that's been built that you know the communication, that locker room helps guys yeah. understand what's happened. They do. Uh, there's a lot of carryover. I mean, obviously we've had a, tons of transactions since Terry and I got here in January of 2021 where we are now, but we did, and we made progress, and we talked about, you know, winning situational football, winning close games. Now we got to build on that. you got to start all over. Whether you won the Super Bowl or you won one game, every season's a, its own enti entity. And, but the guys understand the messaging. They understand what's expected, the habits, how we practice, what we expect from them in the meeting, really when they get out of the building, too. Um, so, and then the guys that come in, and, and there's a reason why we – you know, you extend Grady Jarrett or Jake Matthews, people, you know, you reward the guys that you that always felt this. Institutions get the behaviors they reward. There's a reason why we rewarded Grady and Jake. Charles? You, uh, you mentioned Cordell, your, your expectation he'll be ready for camp. The other guys that are going off cleanups, have you learned any more seeing them? Have your two staff seeing them? Are they all expected to be ready for camp as yeah, well? I won't back in the bunny quarter, but I feel pretty good about where we'll be come July 26th. You almost got it. Like, it's like you guys are working together as a team, which I like about the injury report. But uh, in all seriousness, we, we feel good about it. But, but Charles, to answer your question, there, there may be one or two guys, potentially you may PUP. And just like we did last year, it could be short term, could be long term. We just have to assess that when guys come back for training camp. But I feel good about where we're at for the entire roster, though. Jeff, all right. Just off Wes's question a little bit. Is many camp a time to try? different packages of players or different combinations, or is it just about? We've been doing that all spring. Okay. And that's a lot of stuff we did last year all spring, too. We did it, and that's why I learned a lot about Cordell Patterson and what he can handle. Never coached him before, and we did a lot of that stuff uh, last spring. So we'll continue to enhance that. There may be some other things we add to, to answer your question, Jeff. Uh, but we've, we've tried to do that all spring. Kind of going off Justin's question, I know you have training staff for this, but do you have to, I don't know, mention to the rookies about drinking and all that stuff, preparing for Yeah, we educate them, yeah. Uh, certainly. Yeah, understanding that the heat down here is real. I guess it's, it's a heat wave across the country, correct? Um, so we try to continue, uh, constantly educate our guys about hydration, recovery. Um, yeah, hopefully they, they listen and we'll be smart. You monitor guys. We do have a, a very good performance staff and they'll make sure everybody's okay. I worry about y'all a lot. More than I do the players, right? To be honest. So, I guess on wet sprints or something? No, I just want to see who, you know, who's going to brave it out there or who comes out late or stays under the shade. <laughs> Try to observe it all. <laughs> are there more like planned water breaks or are there more like. We build those breaks? in naturally and certainly if, just like we do in training camp, if, they're, yeah. if it's uh, unusually hot, you, we, we're going to be smart about that stuff. I talked to Marcus last week, and he said something that kind of piqued my interest, where he said something he likes about this staff particularly is that y'all do a good job of stimulating his mind constantly. What does that kind of mean as a coach looking at him and, and what you're trying to ask of him day to day? I'm just trying to get a sense of, like, what that means for him. Well, he's probably running again. I don't want to speak for somebody, and there's a, he obviously felt the reason to tell you that, but – I mean, certainly we challenge all guys. I mean, our, our job as a coach, you're really a teacher. And, and ultimately, they're the ones that are out there in the field, and we're trying to educate them and understand, so we're in sync. So when you call a play, they have a great understanding, but ultimately, they're the ones that execute it. And so there's certainly different ways you challenge guys to think about things, or they have a better understanding, or they know the why behind it, what you're asking. Whether you package a play here or, or this read here, you can eliminate it, but if you see this look, so there's a constant. You push them every day. And um, we have a great staff, and, and, and that's why I enjoy coaching. The relationships you build, you, you got to earn their trust. It's a two-way street, and there's a lot of work behind the scenes. And um, I think Dave Ragone and Charles London do a phenomenal job with that. With uh, Charles, sorry, mm -hmm. um, with Charles, he actually ended up saying um, that they're trying to get Marcus and Desmond to the point sure. at which they understand the scheme in a way that they can go out and save themselves. What does that mean for you as a play caller in, in the in the heat of the game? Well. Yeah, I think 
a lot of times when you're in these settings in practice, when you're very controlled, you know, guys break the huddle and they're trying to, if a guy's not lined up right, you may have a coach that's over anxious and they're telling them, hey, you know, this split here, this or that. That's not how the game's played. So once a call's going in and, and if you're going to ask them to do different things at line of scrimmage with protections or maybe if you package things, they got to make a decision. They got to make all 11 on the play because ultimately that play clock, not going to burn a lot of timeouts. So if something goes wrong or a headset goes out, we've talked about things that rescue ourselves. It happened last year. So, hey, if this goes out, this is what we need to get to. And we did it with Matt, and then it came up. And they were having headset issues in certain games. I believe it was a Washington game. Um, and so you try to build those stuff in because, you know, you don't want to sit there and just call a timeout every time you think that's their job to fix things at times, too. You were talking last week about paintball and not wanting to necessarily do that. What are you all doing on Thursday that is, I guess, an offside activity? Well, um, I just won't want to disclose that. It's very personal capacity. <laughs> so you're, you're taking them all to, to Oklahoma then? Again, I'm not going to disclose that. <laughs> no, no, seriously. We're, we're just going to talk off. Last week, Marcus did say that he does feel really comfortable. I know you don't want to speak for him in the sense that he is comfortable, but do you get a sense of that with him? Yeah, you just watch his play, his body language. He, he, there's a certain thing, especially when you've been around a guy a long time and there's certain mannerisms and no different than you guys observe people all the time. Um, he does feel comfortable, and that's good, especially this time of year and as we crank it up and get into the preseason and more competitive practice. Uh, hopefully, it stays the same way. You said you've known him for a long time. I know you knew him back in Tennessee. Do you feel like he's in a better place now? Yeah, I mean, I think we all, you hopefully, you never stay the same person. You improve, and hopefully I've improved as a coach. And um, certainly he's in a completely different place. He's got more years and seen it from a different perspective going out to Vegas and now being back here. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Stay hydrated.